Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and I run a company called the John Gibbons Body Master Method, and you can see it's a combination of many courses. Today we're gonna to talk about anatomy series, and then we're gonna look at the ankle and the foot, because many people keep asking me, John, can you run an ankle and foot course? So I think we'll start with, with some anatomy components with this fascinating structure. A lot of people struggle with this concept. Why? Probably because there are so many bones, so many ligaments, yeah, and so many muscles, that uh, obviously allow this to move. So I think we'll start with the bones of the ankle and foot complex. We've got 26 bones uh, in total, and we've got 14 individual phalanx bones, which are the phalanges. So we've got the proximal along here, we've got the intermediate, and we've got the distal phalanx bones. On the great toe, the great toe is actually called the hallux, and we've got two, so we've got the proximal end and we've got the distal end. So we've got the two bones on this side. We've got five metatarsals along here, and then we've got seven tarsal bones. So we've got the main one, which is the calcaneus along here. We've got the cuboid bone. We've got three cuneiforms. This one would be the lateral side, and then the intermediate, and then the medial. And then we've got the bone called the navicular, which is similar to the scaphoid in the wrist. And then we've got the talus, which sits underneath the distal part of the tibia, which is known as the medial malleolus. And then we've got the distal part of the fibula, which is called the lateral malleolus. And this will be the main bones. But let's look at some of the bony landmarks. I think we'll look at the lateral side first. So this, this distant end here is the lateral malleolus. And then coming off that, can't see it that well, but we've got this bony landmark called the peroneal tubercle coming around here. And then the peroneal tendons are held in place. And we've got peroneal brevis that will come around and go on to the fifth metatarsal. And then peroneal longus will come around. And actually, there's like a little pulley system here that the peroneal longus will go around the cuboid bone and come right over to the first metatarsal, so it comes right over here. And that's where the, the cuboid will sit. This is the posterior part of the calcaneus, where the Achille tendon will attach. There is a condition where we can get tendinopathy, we can get a periostitis, or even a tenoperiostitis. On children, boys in particular, between eight and 12, there's a condition called apophysitis calcanei, and that's uh, typically known as the Severs disease, named after James Sever, who's an American surgeon. Coming on the medial side of the calcaneus, we've got this shelf. It sounds rather long, the word, and it's called sustentaculum tali. And part of the tibialis posterior tendon will attach over to this area just here. Directly above it will be part of what we call the subtalar joint, and that's where the talus bone will sit on. So the subtalar joint is what I call the fine tuner in the ankle and foot, because basically it will control the pronation and supination. So for instance, if the foot is relatively neutral, then we have the foot with a natural arch underneath it. And we call this a pes rectus. And then if a foot flattens, so it collapses, we will call this a pes planus. And then if you have a high arch, so it's right over, almost like supinated, then we'll call that the pes cavus. And the subtalar joint controls how much pronation or supination we have. Because basically, if we pronate at the subtalar joint, then the pronation is a combination which is called triplanar, and we have what we call dorsiflexion, and then we've got abduction with eversion. And then supination is where we plant our flex and then we invert and adduct, okay? So it's actually, the movement is dorsi and plantar flexion at the ankle, you can't really see it that well in this one, whereas the abduction, adduction, eversion, and inversion is from the foot. So when we pronate, it's a combination of ankle motion and foot motion. So it's a combination of the two complex here. Moving on, this is the navicular tuberosity this bony landmark, and again, the tibialis posterior will come directly onto that area in here. And then tibialis posterior will come behind, and then it forms part of a tarsal tunnel complex here. And the tarsal tunnels 
is known as Tom, Dick and Harry. And then they were named from the Great Escape from Big X, who's Robert Bushel. So they actually tried to do the three tunnels. So the Tom was the larger tunnel. And then the Dick and Harry were the decoys because they wanted to get everybody out. And then, so the Tom is the tibialis posterior, which comes round. And then, so that's T. And then the Dick is the flexor digitorum longus, which comes round to the digits. And then you've got the flexor hallucius longus, which obviously relates to the hallux, which is the great toe. So flexor hallucius longus will come round and attach and flex the great toe. So the Tom, Dick and Harry will be where the, the named tarsal tunnels are located. Just thought you might find that of interest. Further down, we've got what we call the first ray, which is a, a combination of the hallux and the first metatarsal here. So they call this the first ray. And then directly underneath that, we have got the two bony landmarks just here. And these are known as the sesamoids. And these two sesamoid bones, like the patella is a sesamoid, these will grow within the flexor hallucius brevis. So there are some of the main bony landmarks. We've got the cuneiforms, which we can palpate. So we've got the first and the second and the third, or the medial, intermediate, and the lateral cuneiforms. So there we've got the bony landmarks of the foot and ankle complex.